Welcome everybody to part 7 of my Unity VR guide. Today we'll be covering continuous movement. We'll learn how to set up a locomotion system, how to implement snap and continuous turning, how to create a continuous move provider, and how to apply a character controller so our players don't run through barriers. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Every part is modular and can be done independently from all the others. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Coming into our editor and going to the right scene, which is going to be continuous movement, part seven right here, we have our table, we have our ball, but we also have something new. A ramp! Look at that! And I figured since we're doing continuous movement, it might be fun to have a little ramp to run up and down. And besides that, if we open up our XR Origin, we also just have our normal controls, and I've left the ray interactors since we're not doing teleportation. And that's pretty much it for the scene. So with the scene reviewed, let's jump into continuous movement. In the last video, we made a locomotion system, but these are supposed to be modular, so I'm going to teach people how to do it again. So right click, XR, and then locomotion system action based. There we are, and you'll see that it provides us a locomotion script, a teleportation provider, and a snap turn provider. Starting with our locomotion system up here, I'm going to place the XR origin in here. It will find it automatically if we have one in the scene, but I'm gonna go ahead and save it a step. Might as well. And then we have the teleportation provider, which we're not using, so I'll just turn that off. And, you know, if you guys want to learn how to do teleportation provider with a continuous move provider at the same time, uh, maybe I'll make a video. Let me know in the comments if you think that'd be useful. And coming down here, we finally have our snap turn provider. Starting off, we have a turn amount, which is in degrees, set at 45 right now, which kind of works for me. Uh, we have a debounce time. This is going to be the time between when you've had an input action and it's turned, and it'll allow you to do another one so it's not one after another. And then we can enable turn left and right or turn around. This is, you know, when you pull back on the thumbstick, it'll do a 180. And finally, we have two references here we could use. We could do the left hand controller or the right hand. I'm going to choose the right hand just because I like it. And we just look up turn. X, R, R, I, right hand. There we go. So if we start up the scene now, you'll see we are snap turning when I hit right and left. And also I can do 180. Pretty nice. All right. With that, let's move on to the continuous turn provider. So add component, continuous turn provider action base. There we are. And I'm going to enlarge that. There we go. And as you can see, like the snap turn provider, it has a turn speed. So not turn amount, but turn speed. So that's how quickly you're going to be turning. It wants a locomotion system. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that, even though it should automatically find it. You know, it's always good to save it a step. And finally, our references. So I'm going to put it on the right hand again. Let's see. There we are, and I am going to turn off the snap turn provider. Make sure you turn that off before we test things out because otherwise it's gonna get funky. So let's see what we got. And as you can see, we are able to turn continuously. Uh, just a bit of a warning though, some people get motion sick and it's always good to give the option of continuous turning or snap turning. Uh, just make sure you have some kind of menu that would turn one on and the other one off. Coming back to the editor, we have one last thing to go over, and that is getting our continuous move to work. So first we're going to go to add component, then we are going to add continuous move. There we go, and now that we have that in place, let's go over it really quickly. Starting off, we have the locomotion system, which I'm gonna go ahead and put in place. Then we have the move speed, so you can increase the speed here. Uh, enable strafing, so can they move uh, left and right while moving forward using gravity? Well, that explains itself. And we do have gravity application mode, which is going to need some explaining. So we have immediately and attempting to move. And pretty much what this does is immediately will always apply gravity, no matter what, every frame. And attempting to move will only apply it when you have moved the analog stick and it will continue to apply gravity until you are touching the ground and you've stopped moving the analog stick. So it might save you some processing power at the cost of not having 100% accurate gravity simulation. Next, we have a forward source, and this is gonna be the transform it uses to determine what it considers forward. And by default, I'm pretty sure it just grabs the main camera, but if you ever want to change it up, that's where you'd put that. And last, we have our references to the left hand or right hand move action. And since we are turning with our right, 
I'm gonna say we should move with our left. So I'm gonna check that, look for move, and left hand move, there we go. Last, we need to add a few things to our XR origin in order to have this work. And the first thing is gonna be a character controller. So go to add component on the XR origin and character controller. And as you can see here, the character controller is going to add a collider for us to use so we can bump into these objects and stop running through everything. And we are going to adjust a few things here. First, I am going to change the center to one so that will bump it up a little bit. There we go. As you can see, it jumped up there. And next, I want to reduce its radius a little bit. I think 0.3 works, but this is all dependent on how your world is, your environment is, and how you want to interact with it. And that should be pretty good for the character controller. Next, we are going to add a character controller driver. So again, add component, and there's the driver. And you can see that it's asking for a locomotion provider. So, hey, there's our locomotion system. We're gonna go ahead and tap that in there. And then it gives us a min height and a max height. And you know what? I think one and two works just fine. That's just gonna make it so our character's not gonna be too tall for our environment or too small. So if we start up the scene, you'll see that I am able to move, I can turn, and I can even go up this ramp. One quick side note, the head mounted display does not update the character controller, which is what we're using to detect collisions. That's actually only updated when we use our thumbsticks. So the players might be able to poke their heads into things we don't want them to, but I think it works well enough for now. And with that, we have continuous movement. Hey, if you found any of this useful, please consider liking the video. It helps me out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.